I have always dreamt of a winter trip to Scandinavia. Not because it's challenging. It's actually way more than that, with temperatures dropping all the way to minus 35 degrees. But because the beauty of Northern Europe in the winters is just unbelievable. With the Northern Lights and snow covering everything. In fact, there's hardly anyone around. I mean, just look at these views. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am right now in the middle of nowhere. All you can see around is obviously ice and snow because that lake is frozen right now and it's minus 14 degrees right now. This is not the first day of the trip. This is actually day three. Day one, we picked up this massive touring cars, motor home. And after that, I was too tired and too sleepy. So I just slept like a baby. Day two, we actually drove from Stockholm in Sweden to Oslo in Norway and then drove a little further, a couple of hours more to come to this beautiful campsite wherein we we are parked right in the middle of snow and ice and it's freezing cold. In fact, we just plugged in our vehicle to the electricity supply here so that we don't have to use the... I'm not able to talk, you know, it's so difficult so that we don't have to use the gas. Yeah, we are going electricity connection. Pe just. And there, you see the plugging part. It was so freezing cold last night. I don't know how we managed to do it. But trust me, this is an extreme trip because the plan is to stay in this beautiful motorhome for the next week and more because... Hotels are a little inconvenient. You have to stop, you have to book, you have to check out and all that stuff. Here we keep driving and we only stop when we get tired and we go to sleep straight away because the camping culture here is just amazing. It's safe enough to stop wherever you feel like. This has everything you would ever need on a trip. Right from a kitchen with three stoves, two cylinders powering the home part of this motorhome, a proper toilet with bathing setup, yes, an onboard shower, comfortable beds for four people, a dining room which can seat four, and a huge boot for all your luggage. It is an adventure and let's get started. This motorhome is a Citroen jumper, which is a panel van and has been rented from Touring Cars, one of the biggest motorhome rental companies in Europe. Accompanying me on this trip is my wife Nurin and my good friend Gagan, who, for some mysterious reasons, keep throwing water randomly. So even I decided to do so. And that is the reason our 100 litre water tank was over. So we decided to fill it up, but the flap wouldn't open. It was frozen already. After putting some hot water on it, finally it was out and we managed to refill the fresh water tank. I then started driving the motorhome from the campsite and the roads were simply empty. Meanwhile, I was getting used to the motorhome and it did take some time due to its massive size. I had never driven something this heavy. Okay, I have driven trucks, but this was just something else. By the time I got used to the vehicle, this happened. A snowstorm out of the blue made it quite difficult to drive the motorhome at night. Visibility was restricted, traction wasn't great, but we still soldiered on, trusting the good old motorhome to get us to a safe camping spot, but we just camped in the wild. The next morning, as soon as I opened the blinds, I realized what a beautiful spot we had stopped at last night. A quick breakfast, and we then drove to a shopping mall to get some groceries. I even attempted to recycle some bottles, but failed at it. Back to driving, the road was covered with snow. But that didn't stop us from continuing the journey. We drove so much that the motorhome needed a refuel. And since the car had quenched its hunger, it was our time to do the same. Motorhome cooked sticky rice, dal and some veggies. Just filling water into the water tank of this motorhome. It was time to empty the toilet cassette. So I motivated Gagan to do the needful. I have never seen him be this cautious. Then I put a tap from this bottle into the pot. Next, it was time to empty the grey water. And soon, it started to snow. Very heavily, with rain in between. The view around was completely white, with a blanket of snow everywhere. But we continued to drive non-stop only to reach a point where the only way forward was to board a ferry. It was free, so I can't complain.
and docking point is here. Norway is connected by a ton of ferries and quite a lot of them are even free. It didn't take time to board, so it was quite fast. Back on the road, we continued to drive as we encountered a mix of weather. Snow, rain and snow again. Calling it a night randomly. This is actually a parking lot and we parked our motorhome right here at night. There is no one around. The reason to park here is that it's very close, like walking distance from the Atlantic road. So finally we are here at night, it was no point crossing because we went there, we couldn't see anything. We could just see the bridge from far in the dark. But now when the sun rises, then we're going to go and see it. It snowed last night. It was not snowing when we came here, it was completely dry. They actually came and cleared the snow, but they did not disturb us. So we can park our motorhome wherever we feel like. And that is the beauty of the motorhome. The poor motorhome is feeling very cold because check the amount of snow on the vehicle, but still, it starts on one crank. Time to crank. One crank. And finally, it is that time to drive on the most scenic road in the world, the most beautiful drive in the world. This is the Atlantic Road, which by the way, has got eight freaking bridges and it's so freaking lovely. You won't believe it, almost four years back, I'd seen this bridge in a picture or something on Instagram or something. I sent it to Gagan, I'm like, where is this? We should go. And he told me it's all the way in Norway. We came to Europe twice, but we never came here because we were planning we'll come someday. And my goodness, it feels so surreal. The view around is just next level. We have water below, we have mountains around, and this bridge swings like this. There are birds flying right ahead. Oh my God, this is the reason we live for. This is the reason why I travel. And this is just amazing. Unbelievable. I might be in a very heavy van filled with body roll, but trust me, the feeling of driving on this road is just something else. Now it's not snowing right now. Usually it snows a lot here. Thankfully it's not snowing right now but you know what? Even with the snow there's good amount of traction and grip so it's a lot of fun driving here. I'm enjoying like really a lot. Having the time of my life right now. Next level yeah. What a beautiful road. It is so beautiful that I'm going back again on this road because no matter how many times you drive here you're just gonna love it more and more and now it's a upward then there's a right and there's a decline i'm not able to express it in words you really have to come here to experience this beauty in person because no amount of videos or photos or talking or describing all this is going to make any difference till the time you don't visit here it's so beautiful look at those birds flocking there my goodness i just love it oh, oh, oh i forgot i'm in third gear i was shifting trying to shift into third again it's mind-blowing yeah it's just mind-blowing how they managed to make something this beautiful is beyond me. I just don't understand how they did it, but they've done a fab job indeed. It's been four or five hours here itself. We just can't get enough of the beauty. Just unbelievably scenic. There's very little traffic. People are coming. They're also stopping, taking photos, enjoying. Someone is walking. The atmosphere here is that the world has kind of come to an end. There is no deadline. There is no hurry. There's no work to be done. Just chill in this beautiful atmosphere. I love it. Okay, it's time, let's cook. Since I was too busy enjoying, Nurin got pissed at me for no reason at all. So I had to make breakfast for everyone. Second in command in the kitchen is Gagan Chaudhary today. <laughs> Beautiful. Driving further, the roads became even better. Right now, I'm actually waiting for the ferry to arrive. It's coming from there. One ferry just left. Because they cannot make roads everywhere, what they do is they transport you from ferries from one point to another point. And 15 of these ferries are actually free of cost. Just imagine. The ferry ride was quite short and we were back on the road in just 15 minutes. It was my turn to service the motorhome now. So I filled fresh water and then mm, emptied the cassette. Yes, that's the place where all the pee and poop is stored. But don't worry, it decomposes and all that comes out is blue liquid that doesn't even smell. So again, I can't really complain. Norway has a lot of long tunnels. And once we even got escorted through one of them as there was some work going inside the tunnel. 
The roads were beautiful devoid of any traffic. So we kept driving. Soon we would be out of gas. So we started searching for a replacement cylinder. But got tired and slept. But the next day, this is what I woke up to. I have become John Cena today because you can see me. <laughs> it is so cold. It is so cold. The temperature right now outside is minus 18 to 20 degrees, and we are freezing. So today morning we have a very long journey to take, or rather today we have a very long journey to take. That's the reason Gagan actually got up in the morning approximately around 5:36 and started driving immediately. And then I joined him around 8 o'clock. Then I started driving a bit when he was freshening up and having breakfast. Now I will have breakfast while he will drive. That is a beautiful car behind, completely full of snow. There is no track. But there is a lot of traction because the car has winter tires, grips surprisingly well. And oh, after some guts, I'm trying to show myself. Hands are frozen, everything is frozen. But what a journey! What a view! Look at what is around! Oh my God! Time lapse of Bantai. Today we had to cover a lot of distance because we had to take a big ferry. Hence, we kept driving. But since the time of the ferry wasn't known to us and the ferry schedule wasn't available anywhere, we reached early and then waited a good eight hours for a ferry to arrive, boarding it at 4 a.m. Right now, I am on a three hours, 15 minutes ferry ride. Started from there, from here, going all the way here, and I had to wait eight hours for this ferry. So now it's going to take a lot of time to reach our destination, which means it's time to sleep somewhere here. If you notice the clouds are moving too fast or this ferry is moving too fast, something is happening for sure. But after a nice two and a half hours of sleep, we are finally here. Unfortunately, it's too freaking cold outside right now. I'm catching the, the window and my hands are freezing. And plus it's very dark, so you really can't see much outside. But finally we are here and I managed to get some nice sleep, which is fantastic. But honestly, I could sleep more, which I will do right now in the motor home because I can. The ferry ride costed us a whopping rupees 14,000 and since this was a long ferry ride, we were asked to sit in the deck with no access to our motorhome during the journey. We reached an archipelago in the dark and couldn't see much and thus I decided to sleep. I woke up in the most beautiful place ever. Zada hawa. Oh my god, it is so freaking windy. It feels as if the door will only come off. So right now I'm in Lofoten. I don't know how to pronounce that, but it is so breathtaking. The views are just next level. It's freezing cold. It's actually very windy somehow and it's just next level. Oh my god. I can stay here all day long. In fact, we are here since morning. We came here and then after coming here, freshened up, took a bath, went to the washroom where we had to pay 82 rupees actually to access the washroom which wasn't that clean. Ironically, the washrooms which are not paid are cleaner than the washroom which is paid. Now, we are parked here because the view right ahead is just mind-numbing, mind-blowing. But I'm feeling so cold and I'm actually wearing gloves right now. Sun is right there, very bright right now, but it doesn't stay that bright for long because the sun duration is very short. So enjoy the views while they last. In fact, <laughs> I am thinking, what are we going to do today? Because we have a dry, oh my God, so slippery because obviously snow starts to melt and making it a little slippery here. You can just see the view behind. I think this calls for a drone shot. Our search for fresh water started again, but due to the cold, water lines seemed to have frozen. So we continued driving to our next destination with views which continued to be just 
breathtaking. There was barely anyone on the road and we thought to ourselves, are we the only crazy ones who go on a road trip in a motorhome in such freezing temperatures? Probably yes. We are the rebels, we are the misfits, we are the troublemakers, the ones who see things differently. The cold reminded us that we needed to swap out a cylinder and finally we found one but the struggle was real. We drive around 500 kilometers every day and today was no different but we were heading north in the search of the northern lights which also meant a big drop in temperature. OMG, the temperature is minus 26 degrees. Yeah, that's right. Minus 26 degrees outside. It is going to freeze you once you go outside. That's the reason we're not going outside, of course. Minus 28 degrees. <laughs> Crazy. Sir, maza a gaya. Absolute fun. I will tell you something, bro. Yeah. Nurain is missing out on the fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nuren was busy sleeping and it was so cold that we had another challenge. Something we just couldn't imagine or forecast. Can you guess what are we up to here? Extreme adventure, sir. Over extreme adventure. Over here. Motorhome is all fun and games unless and until you realize the struggles in cold. Temperature right now is minus 27 degrees. Last night it was minus 28 degrees. And in that temperature, this whole luggage compartment door froze completely. We had to remove something from it, which was basically the sheet which is placed on the front of the windscreen. Last night we had this massive struggle to put this thing on top of the car so that it doesn't push cold air inside but I'm sleeping on the other end and cold air was coming from there. Because it was so cold we really needed it in spite of the fact that heating was on. It took us so long to actually put hot water and then open the doors and then there was this warning saying engine oil is less so we had to actually top up the engine oil. Again the bonnet froze so we had to put hot water there as well, open the bonnet and then put engine oil. So it's very tough and challenging but a lot of fun. This adventure is absolutely crazy. Everything is freezing. In fact when you're out for two minutes, I'm not kidding. Okay, I'm not kidding. This key here is actually frozen right now it will not come out it just does not come out because it's frozen so what we have to do is we have to actually put in hot water to melt it and then remove it <laughs> so a lot of these fun activities happening here in no man's land last night we saw a bit of the northern lights but now i think it's time to figure out what's next because the cold is getting kind of unbearable and i'm freezing right now we hit the road again and saw a convoy of military vehicles. Meanwhile, a super cool signboard was actually covered with snow. It was time for breakfast, so I quickly made some oats. But we had a problem. The grey water line had frozen. Pouring boiling hot water didn't help either. We tried to reach the root of the problem, but then decided to drive further ahead. Wow, what an amazing road and breathtaking views all around. But it was just another day in Norway. Sun goes down really fast in the winters, so most of our driving seems to be at night, but it's actually late afternoon and evening. Finally guys, here they go. Northern lights. Oh my god, it's such a brilliance. Wow. And temperature has dropped to minus 30 now. What is minus 30 degrees? It's... It's freezing cold and finally I have seen the northern lights. Check out this ice which has frozen on the windscreen because of minus 32 degrees outside. It is so cold that we had to light a fire, warm ourselves a bit. No, actually what we are doing is we are trying to get the water drainage started, which is frozen completely because the water is frozen, of course. So with this, hopefully we will unfreeze stuff. But we failed at it because even the fire couldn't melt the frozen water line. So I just gave up and went to sleep. Imagine waking up every day at a new place, which is this breathtaking. A motorhome does that to you. Today, not only did I start driving quickly, but I also shot my driving vlog of this 3,500 kg monster of a machine, aka our trusty motorhome. 
एंड नाउ इट इज शॉर्ट ऑफ द लास्ट डे विद द मोटर होम बिकॉज टुमारो आवर ट्रिप इज गेटिंग ओवर एंड आई रियलाइज वन थिंग दैट मोटर होम इज ऑल अबाउट गेटिंग यूज टू इट नाउ दैट वी आर यूज टू इट वी कैन एक्चुअली पुश इट हार्ड एंड फास्ट एंड ड्राइविंग एंड हंड्रेड एंड टेन किलोमीटर्स पर आवर विच इज द स्पीड लिमिट राइट नाउ एंड ट्रस्ट मी आई फील वेरी कम्फर्टेबल आई नो हैव टू कम्प्लीटली काउंटर करेक्ट द स्टियरिंग व्हील टाइम एंड अगेन आई नो आई हैव टू गेट रेडी फॉर सम अदर कार टू पास बाय बिकॉज एंड इट डज इट शेक्स द कम्प्लीट कार वेरी बैडली सो अ फ्यू थिंग्स हेयर एंड देयर यू हैव टू बी अ बिट केयरफुल अबाउट but otherwise trust me a motor home is not that difficult to drive if you haven't noticed there isn't a single soul on the road even though the sun is finally out in all its glory right now i'm at a place which is unbelievable but the luck is very bad today because there is the baltic sea baltic sea i don't know how to say that but anyways it's a sea which connects not connects it touches both sweden as well as finland and it gets frozen during the winter so we are in january right now in january it starts to freeze and by march it freezes a lot more so this elephant which you see weighs Four freaking ton. It cannot go here because the limit is two tons. And as time goes by, as it freezes more and more, then they allow up to four tons. They actually measure and see the depth to allow higher weight of the cars to go here. And you can actually go to an island there. It is so freaking beautiful. It's still minus seventeen degrees. So I'm just freezing. The sun is out finally, but you can't really see it. How it just looks amazing. In fact, the cracks here on the ice because when vehicles go, some cracks and all come, but the vehicle will not go down. It can handle two tons. right now it says two turns right there somewhere there it says that as well in fact i was just standing and my foot went deep down right into water touching water there lot of cars are actually coming taking a u turn from here everyone thinks they have more than 2000 kg it says two turn they keep changing that i think you should see this amazing atmosphere why a drone shot So finally, one car actually went there. It's a Mitsubishi Pajero something something pickup truck with this covering behind. That person had the guts, had the balls to go. Here you can see boats and all are docked right there. Once it unfreezes, obviously it's used as a water body for sailing and all that stuff. What a view! It is so mind blowing. It's amazing. I just wish we had a little bit of less weight today so we could actually go. But maybe next time. Since our heavy car couldn't go here, I decided to do some power slides on foot of course. Today was another long day of driving. We were awfully behind schedule due to the delays in hunting for the northern lights. We started driving south now to head back from where we started a week ago. Today morning we were 1000 kilometers away from Stockholm, our destination for today or tomorrow because that's where we actually started from it's still minus 20 degrees outside this ice which is actually frozen here yeah this ice which is frozen here you can't see anything on the right or on the left because of the ice being frozen however i have cut the distance by half because i have been driving consistently since the past 500 kilometers non freaking stop but we'll have to stop for fuel i don't feel like stopping i can drive the next 500 kilometers as well non stop thing is that the roads are quite nice and straight and you can maintain 110 km per hour which is the speed limit here which is quite nice the car needs a downshift every time there's an incline i have to shift from 6 to 5 5 to 4 that time because otherwise it just starts decreasing the speed to like 80 90 km per hour the best thing is that there are cameras which are marked here in google maps as well as outside it tells you there's a camera and you know what they slow down the speed from 110 to 70 km per hour when there's an intersection for a u turn and instantly they put it back to 110 km per hour i am loving the drive a very funny thing happened right now gagan went to fill fuel and uh, the fuel was not coming so he had to go inside to get it activated that person is saying give an id first then only i'll start this fuel line right here what's the logic i entered he's like is this guy with you gagan is like yes he is with me so he's like tell him to stand here then i will start and i was like what's the logic he's like in sweden there are a lot of these people who actually fill fuel and then boom, run away without paying for the fuel so that's a bit of a bummer anyways this car is going to take maybe 90 liters which is like 20 25000 rupees there it's pumping <laughs> so it's not just india where there's a lot of crime there's crime everywhere because human beings are like that the next morning we filled fresh water in the motor home 
clean the vehicle and threw all the garbage because we were doing its walk around video today. And since the temperature had decreased to minus 10, the drainage finally started to work. <sighs> this is a very nice and uh, innovative thing they have done. They actually put this through the road so that you can actually see the corner. And this is a reflector. So it reflects when the light shines on this. It reflects so you know exactly what are the edges of the road. And it's made of plastic. It shakes like this. And it's made of plastic. So even if you hit it, it doesn't break anything here or on your car. So many days of emptying the toilet cassette, the only complaint I had was the weight of it. But today I realized it has wheels, so you can easily drag it to the emptying spot. I feel so stupid now. A couple of very interesting things I noticed about the roads here. There are absolutely no potholes. There are just simply no potholes in spite of the fact that the weather is extreme. It rains, it snows and then they also use a truck with a scrubber which scrubs out the snow and puts it on the side of the road. In spite of all that, the road doesn't have a single pothole. Imagine the quality of construction and the lack of corruption here. Otherwise, we know that the amount of money which is spent in road construction in our country, in India, so massive yet there are so many potholes and the road conditions are very bad indeed. Another interesting thing is that when there are speed cameras, it tells you there's a speed camera ahead. Yes, it will warn you earlier saying that there's a speed camera. Why? Because their aim is not about taking money from you. Their aim is to have safety. Where there's a chance of an accident, they will tell you there's a camera so everyone slows down there. Wow, it's unbelievably awesome. They are telling you that there's a speed camera slow down because they only put speed cameras in places where there's a chance of an accident. In fact, in the UK, I read why there are speed cameras. In a place where there have been five accidents or more, they put a speed camera. Wow. The car got really dirty because of the rain. So we also washed it thoroughly. It costed us around rupees 1500. Don't ask how it fits into the washing bay. And then after four and a half thousand kilometers of driving in 10 days in this motorhome, we returned it back. Chalo, bye bolte gaadi. Fully convinced that motorhome travel is the way to go. You see, when Gagan or Lorraine were driving, I simply used to sleep. Not only is a motorhome very convenient, but it turns out to be more economical as well as you save the time and money of going to a hotel. No need to unpack and pack, check in and check out every day. Plus, whenever you feel the need, the need to sleep, you just park right there and go to sleep. Wow, I love this. And then I took a flight from Stockholm to Munich, Munich to Dubai and then Dubai to Mumbai to finally reach home.